Hi, David Vizard here, and you're watching Paratech 10. What I'd like to talk about now is uh, timing change, something I uh, only dawned on me to uh, mention it a, a few minutes ago. Right? What I'm doing here is I'm going to be testing uh, cams and setting them up in this engine right and testing different rockers and to do that we need to be able to alter the cam timing because cam timing for one type of rocker is not necessarily the same as for another right now the first rock uh, first cam gear i put on had a timing chain which was very tight uh, you'll, you'll see that in a moment when uh, sean who puts this all together for me uh, got to show off the tension on it now the thing is is that we don't want one that's too tight it can lose a lot more power than you might think so let's deal with that now let me just get comfortable here and tell you the rest of the story way back every, you notice a lot of things are way back for me that's what comes from being old but anyway way back when um, I was doing some testing on cam gears and things like this and uh, um, I had a brand new Cloy's uh, um, adjustable cam gear and uh, I put this on and uh, it was tight right a little too tight um, so I thought to myself, well, that should break in, right? At least it will run very quiet and I won't have scattered cam timing. Anyway, here's where experienced dyno testing comes in. The, the spec of engine I was building was one that I'd already built before, but this one was going to be used as a mule motor. So I knew within a few horsepower how much it should make. Well, it came time to dyno the engine and it was down on power i mean uh, i i was missing at least 10 horsepower now i uh, i take that as something that's very relevant it was making about 475 horsepower instead of about 485 to 488 horsepower well i did my dyno testing and uh, when i pulled the engine apart after the dyno testing I noticed that the cam timing gear was still, uh, the chain rather, was still very tight. And it just occurred to me that maybe that was the cause. Uh, so I loaded the engine back on the dyno, rechecked the horsepower, then took it down and I put a worn timing chain on it. Now I, what I did was I went from a timing chain which had no slack in it of any consequence. I mean, I could barely move that timing chain a sixteenth of an inch, and that was with a lot of effort, uh, you know, at the side. Uh, and replaced it with one which had got at least three sixteenths of an inch of slack, at least. No, no probably near a quarter inch. And checked uh, and put the engine together and checked that. Now, I did notice that the timing ignition timing at idle was a bit more scattered but to my surprise that old timing gear made 11 horsepower difference 11 plus that is when the engine was running wide open there was virtually no scatter when i say virtually no scatter there was a small amount but not much Whereas previously with the tight timing chain, which by the way ran very quietly, there was no real scatter that you could detect. It was within about a half a degree, I estimate, every time. Now then, this caused me to wonder why there was this big power difference, right? Just for uh, uh, a second, I should say a second opinion on this, what I did was I put a really slack timing chain on must have had half an inch of slack and that's a, a, a lot ran the engine and 
it was only about two horsepower down. The timing was scattered pr pretty badly, and uh, uh, it was difficult to get a consistent run. But on average, it was about two, maybe three horsepower down on the uh, one with about three quarter inch, three sixteenths timing. But it was way up on one that was tight. This is what I learned. First off, a timing chain which is too tight costs you power. And I don't think it's all friction. I think part of it is that a tight timing chain transmits uh, um, crank torsionals straight to the cam with no softening up between. Right? The engine had a good damper on there. Um, uh, so it wasn't a case of not having a, a good damper to, to damp out those vibrations. Secondly, I think when the tension's on the belt, the friction of the cam uh, driving the camshaft is up. So there is some power loss there. But I, I, I think we can only talk about, about this in terms of maybe two or three horsepower. Uh, so what's the lesson to be learned here? If the timing chain is tight, find a looser one. Now, some folk will say, yes, but when it breaks in, it will be okay. Well, here's the problem. Modern oils have got so good that it may take 10,000 miles for that camshaft or that timing gear to break in. So the break-in oil that you're going to use becomes critical, right? And the break-in. So two things to remember here. Firstly, don't use a timing chain that's too tight. It will cost you measurable horsepower. Secondly, uh, use a break-in fluid that actually works and break the motor in maybe a little longer than you would need to, to normally. Right, now I think that's all I've got to say about timing chains here, but that 11 horsepower, that's easy to come by. So before you throw away your old timing chain, it, remember, it may not be the timing chain that's the problem here, it may be the gear that's worn, right? So don't throw that timing chain away, keep it and see if it's a tighter fit on the new gears that you may get, right? But whatever you do, don't use a tight timing chain. What we are looking at here is the uh, comp cams adjustable uh, cam gear. Now this may be difficult to see, but there you should be able to see, just see some timing marks here. And uh, by uh, loosening these bolts here, we're able to separate the chain wheel part of the gear with the center part. And with this special tool here, we can insert that into there like that and we can alter the cam timing one way or the other, like so, right? Now, nobody should be testing cams without the aid of one of these or something similar like the Jessel belt drive, which right now is busy in use on another end. This is too tight. It only has about a sixteenth of an inch of movement and that's when you put some effort on it. What we need to do here is have more slack because a chain this tight will absorb more power than you think. First job is to make sure that you've got the gears lined up. That dimple on there and that dimple there. This is so that we can uh, realign it with a alternative chain, right? So the next job is to take off that gear. So at this point, when we've lined up the dots, we take off the gear and replace the chain, trying to keep the dot alignment uh, intact.
this much slack in the chain is just about perfect after the engine's broken in it will be spot on oh by the way if you like this little tip please hit that like button and if you want some more little tips like this hit the subscribe button right we need everybody on board that we can thank you very much for watching